Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Let's give him an house praise because he's worthy. Amen. What a great day to be in church. What great worship. Can we thank the worship team for leading us with such excellence? We just had an incredible conference and just, you know, we keep saying it every year it's the best conference we've ever had. But this year, so many of our sessions, we couldn't close properly because just Holy Spirit was just, we didn't know how to close it. And I just love that. Karen and I have always wanted to be, where are you going, Bez? Uh, fetch your water. So we, it's not our church, we're just the water boys and girls, as you can see. And um, so, um, you know, we've always wanted to lead a church that is out of control. Some people say I'm a control freak or it's not true. It's only in the beginning stages when I don't know you then. But then when I love you, I let you go. And um, so you can be conformed to the image of the, uh, Jesus. And so, um, you know, we've always wanted to be part of a church where that we're leading that's out of control. It's in Holy Spirit's control. And so uh, for me, it was a dream weekend conference weekend, just a dream weekend. Pastor Meshach and Fabian and just everyone um, just was saying how, and Pastor Mark, I really believe it's, it's um, the culture of prayer that, you know, our men's prayer meeting, we had a global prayer meeting, I, we were still in Preston in the UK, I was online for the global prayer meeting before conference, we had 85 devices, so we had well over 110, 20 people just praying. Um, I banned some of the intercessors in this church from coming to my funeral because they want to bring me back. Not everyone loves me, but people, when they get emotional, they do. And um, so I don't want to come back. I don't, I don't want to come back. When I go, I go. And um, I do want to be passed around during the praise and worship. The, let's just take me out the coffin and pass me around. And I want to have a last go with the Liberty family. And then my family, I said they must take my body on a cruise. If there's any money left over, I don't know. You know maybe they can just go to Emerentia Dam. And uh, just give the fish a Big Mac, you know? Because I'm going to be big by then. When I'm 80, I'm moving to Italy. I'm just warning you. I'm going to eat pasta, pizza, gelato, and red wine until my dying day. I don't care how big my casket is. Someone has, else has to pay for that. I'm not worried about that. So why have I got minus six minutes on? Have I been speaking for six minutes already? Amazing. And I've said nothing, as usual. So, um, yeah, conference is just great. And one of the, one of the great things at conference for me, I just in the second row, we had Pastor Nicholas and um, Rosalind from Mombasa. And a few, uh, a few months ago, I think I shared with you how their church, Liberty Church in Mombasa, is really facing the onslaught of aggressive Islam and witchcraft. And um, the two pastors there had never been out of Kenya. So... Uh, we kind of broke the budget, didn't we, Cheryl? Pastor Cheryl, we broke the budget. We got a finance meeting on. We need to get our act together before we're in the finance meeting. Um, anyway, we broke the budget because what happened is that when I shared their story, um, that they needed another 10,000 Rand to kind of finish off the first phase of their building, three people just came and gave 10,000 Rand each. And so, isn't that fantastic? And so we gave that money to him. Plus, our Maidstone campus wanted to sow into them. So we gave them that money. But we didn't have money to bring them over. But I felt they needed to be here. So anyway, we broke the budget. They came. And this was their first time in South Africa. And it, it, it says, yeah, they told me when, before they left on the Monday how the conference had changed their lives. Got back to Kenya and sent me a WhatsApp, a photograph of three ladies the other day who were uh, Muslims who were looking for a witch doctor. So that would, um, and you know, we're seeing at Liberty Church more and more Muslims coming to Christ than ever before. And um, it's a wonderful thing. And listen, there's a guy in our church, he was in, he was in the 815 experience. His name's Mo. And I've been to his house for lunch because his wife does a great curry. And... Um, it's my love language, food. And, um, and he told me a story. You know, people stuck in religion, any religion, um, a, a re religion is abusive. It messes people up. It breaks people down. 
But you see this guy now as a believer in Jesus Christ, how he's been set free, how God's opening doors for him. It's absolutely incredible. And that's why we don't even believe in Christian religion. We believe in Jesus. We believe in a relationship with Jesus will set you free because he loves you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so with the family of Mombasa, these three ladies came in and, and he led them to the Lord. And you can see in the photo how their lives have been changed. I know it's only the beginning. It's a whole journey. But we're here to make disciples. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Okay. Just, I want to remind you of the great commission and the great commandment. Matthew 28, all authority Jesus has been given to me in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples. We are a church where disciples make disciples. Now, the discipleship journey at Liberty starts with growth track. Then it goes into lifestyle of freedom, level one, level two. Then really advance for the very bright go with Pastor Mark in Liberty U. But really, from, from lifestyle of freedom, we want every disciple to be a disciple maker. And I want you to get into your head that God has put people in your world so you can disciple them even before they believe in Jesus. You, you, you can start praying for them. You can start being good to them. You can start prophesying you can start um, extending kindness and the fruits of the spirit to them because they're on their way to meet Jesus because they are in your world therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the Father Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you and I'm with you always to the very end of the age the promise of the presence of Jesus is predicated on our obedience to the great commission you are a witness whether you realize it or not whether you be a good witness or a bad witness you are a witness every one of us is a witness so let's live ambassadorial lives and be a witness of the kingdom of God the great commandment Jesus said um, in Matthew chapter 2, 22 he said you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind by the way I love worship I love the way we worship here at Liberty Church thank you for worshiping Jesus and stepping out of your comfort zone because all growth is dependent on you and I leaving our comfort zone the familiar the comfortable the timid and stepping out and worshiping him in spirit and in truth amen this is the first and great commandment the second is like you shall love your neighbor as yourself when we love god you're always going to love people because god loves people people matter to god so when you become a worshiper you will notice that you start loving the people around you you start loving people who are strangers to you people who are in your family we are called to love our neighbor as we love ourselves god has called you to love you because god loves you if you don't love you but god loves you who do you think you are if god forgives you but you don't forgive you who do you think you are if you're living in guilt shame and condemnation jesus wants to set you free today so that you can love the life that God has designed you for you. And that you can go and love your neighbor. And so we're a church that worships. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We're committed to worship. But we're also committed to witness. That we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. And if your neighbor was in a building that was on fire, it would be unloving to warn them of the fire and not do something to get them out the fire. And everyone that doesn't know Jesus is headed to a fiery eternity and, 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 and a place without, without the presence of God, which is hell itself. And if that doesn't do something to us, we need to take our part because if we love people we don't want people to go to an eternity without the purpose and the presence of God we don't want people to go to hell so worshipers are automatically witnesses that our devotion leads us to make disciples Jesus said go into all the world but after he said go he said to them in Acts 1 4 wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon you so you because then when the Holy Spirit comes upon you you will be my witnesses in Acts chapter 2 the Holy Spirit came upon them they spoke in tongues and they became witnesses it was the diaspora it was the beginning of the church it was the birthplace of the church as the as, as those who were filled with the Holy Spirit went all over the world and preached the gospel and so you and I are a witness. If you believe in Jesus, you're a witness. People are watching your life. So what does it entail for me to be a witness? Well, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, speaking in tongues is great. Speaking in tongues builds me up. Speaking in tongues gets me to pray the most unselfish prayers I can pray and bypass my thinking, connect my spirit with God's spirit, align my life with God's life. But it's to empower us, not with just tongues, but with the fruits and the gifts of the spirit so that we can reach people that God loves. So I'm, I'm praying that God will give you opportunities 
and to, uh, to see people different, to love people, and to reach out to people. Why? Because the chief end of man is to live for his glory and to enjoy him forever. All of history is moving to one place. Uh, the prophet Habakkuk 2.14 says, And the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And so we are here not for our own celebrity, we are here for his glory. It's all about Jesus. It's all about extending the glory of God through being a witness. And when you're a witness, it's because you're a worshiper. And you witness not to gain God's favor, but we become witnesses because we already have God's favor. We worship him for what he's done for us, but what he's done for us, we want him to do for others. Amen. We cannot keep this to ourselves. Psalm 102, 18 says, This will be written for a generation to come, that a people that are yet to be created may praise Him. And so we go on mission. We become witnesses because there, are a gener- there is a generation that are yet to praise Him. There's next door neighbors that are yet to praise Him. There are family members that are yet to praise Him. There are colleagues at work that are yet to praise Him. There are people in my world that are yet to praise Him. So that's why I witness, so that they will worship Him. Witnessing will give it to the team, but I want to read to you the, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew 5. He says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in synagogues in the corners of the streets. They may be seen by men. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, we need to shut the door. You know, it's great to pray on the way to work, and I believe in praying all day. I believe in talking to God all day. But listen, there's got to be a time in your day, there's got to be a couple of times in your week where you shut the door. You shut the door on scrolling. You shut the door on TV. You shut the door on speaking nonsense on WhatsApp. And you pray. We believe God is a God of breakthrough. We worship God, God of breakthrough. We believe in for you. I, when I pray for you, I'm praying for your breakthrough. But sometimes you've got to shut the door. And you've got to believe God for that breakthrough. And don't come out that room. Don't come out of that inner place, that secret place, until you've had a breakthrough in your own thinking, in your own faith. Amen? Pray to your fathers in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they'll be heard for the many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you need before you pray. Pray in this manner, and then he teaches them the disciples' prayer or the Lord's prayer. He said, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Worship. We start prayer with worship. We worship our Father who are, not my Father, our Father. And so when I'm thinking about our Father, I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about us as a family. And God will bring people to my mind, our Father. And I may, Lord, I just, I praise you for what you're doing in Pastor Ronald Cena's life. I praise you for what you're doing here. And you're doing here. You can pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You can pray there for one minute or five minutes or 30 minutes. You can stay there. But it starts, prayer starts with worship. Then he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Witness. Mission. We pray for kingdom. For we pray for his kingdom to come on earth where we live, where we live, move, have our being, eat, sleep, work. We pray for the kingdom of God. We seek first the kingdom of God in my neighborhood, in my workplace, in my life group, in my ministry, in my family. I want my children growing up and, and they need to know about the kingdom of God. They need to see breakthroughs in their own life. I want to get my children and my grandchildren to church. I want to get my family there. Well, I, my, mm, mm, we're on Sundays. Mm, no, get them here. Give us this day our bed. Daily bread, provision. Lord, we thank you for your provision. I think we'll have enough food for today. I thank you for your daily bread. I thank you that you'll feed us physically and you'll feed us spiritually. Lead me to a word. Uh, I have new wine. I have a now word. Isn't that a powerful? Don't you love the songs we're singing? I have new wine and a now word. Do you have a now word? Or are you still chewing on something God said to you a year ago, but you haven't obeyed it yet? You know, you can only choose a certain amount and it's, and it's dead. You need a now word. You need a, a word that comes from God now out of the Logos. 
Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Our identity is in our forgiveness that we are children of God. We're no longer sinners saved by grace. We're the righteousness of God in Jesus. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God. I'm a co-heir with Christ. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm healed. I'm forgiven. I'm redeemed. I'm be chosen before the foundation of the world. I've been set apart to be holy and blameless in love. The righteous requirement of the law is not fulfilled by me. It's fulfilled for me in what Jesus has done on my behalf. Amen. So I live in forgiveness and I extend forgiveness. And do not lead us into temptation, warfare, but deliver us from the evil one. The evil one wants to come and distract you and steal, kill and destroy. But deliver me from the evil one for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Amen. That's the Lord's Prayer. It can take you five minutes. It can take you 55 minutes. That's the Lord's Prayer. So let's get back to prayer. Let's shut the door. Why? Because there's a generation that's yet to be created. We're a multi-generational church. We believe in legends, the 60 plus club. They have a great time. We believe our, our Liberty Kids is a phenomenal ministry where children are ministering to children and experiencing breakthroughs. The other day I was taking my 16-year-old grandson to, to squash. I can't believe the scriptures he's coming up with in the book of Matthew. He's studying the book of Matthew and he's studying the book of Hebrews. They have a WhatsApp Bible study going. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. Full of the word of God. I love that. My 12-year-old grandson introduced me to Forrest. Not Gump, you banana. Forrest Frank. Go check out Forrest Frank. He's exasperated my car one day. He said, Papa, I don't like your music. Can I, can I play my music in your car? I said, go for it. And there he is singing about the blood of Jesus, washing him white as snow to some hip, you know, some great tune. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And he knows all the words. Man, I love that. We believe in children and revolutions, youth. Over a, in both campuses, you've got way over 100 Nearly 200 teenagers on both campuses on a Friday night. How good is that? Young people, and I want to tell you, teenagers, the best time to, um, for, to preach the gospel to teenagers, because when you're a teenager, you're working out your identity. Am I who I am? Am I who my parents say I am? Am I who my friends say I am? Am I who I think they think I am? Who am I? If you don't get your identity sorted out in Christ, then, then by the time you say 35, 40, you go through another identity crisis. And you think that riding a Harley and wearing a gold chain is going to make you, uh, what? You know what worship does? Worship takes your eyes off you. And it brings you to place a breakthrough in the flesh. Breakthrough over your flesh, over the accusation of the enemy. Worship positions you to be a disciple maker. We're a church where disciples make disciples, and we're, we're going into a season where we're going to equip you to disciple the people in your world. It's where leaders raise leaders. We want to see a church where businesses start businesses. What our nation re really needs is small and medium ent term enterprises. And if you're a business owner and you're self-employed and you're working for yourself and you're broke away from the corporate world and you started a business and you're feeding your family, well done. You're an entrepreneur. Th well done for your faith. Thanks for taking a step out. But I want to ask you, I want to challenge you. Can you grow your business? Can you scale your business so you don't just feed you but you feed more than you? That you can employ people who can feed their families? Because every time you employ someone in South Africa, you must probably feeding 12 to 15 other people. When you employ someone in South Africa, you're feeding 12 to 15 other people. And so we need businesses that start businesses. I prophesy over every business in this church, over every business owner, acceleration and multiplication in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May you, may you extend and for those working in a company or corporate, may God prosper you. May God promote you. Promotion comes from the Lord. May you walk in where angels fear to tread. May you have a now word from God. May you speak innovation and creativity. May you open doors. May you have wisdom for your business in Jesus' name. Amen. We want businesses that start businesses. And as we plant churches in Africa and Europe and the United States, we, you may be called to one of those teams because every believer needs a Bible and they. 
possible. And maybe you're going to start your business, take it from your garage globally. You're going to start it in the States. You're going to start your business in Europe. You're going to start your business in other parts of Africa as God calls you. You can be part of a church planting team. I look forward to the day that I go to Oral Tambo and I've got three, we've got 300 people at Liberty with their bags and their suitcases relocating to a new nation to start a new, to start a new church, new businesses, new families. We need to get excited about starting businesses. We need to get excited about marriage. I don't care what the world says. Marriage is still a blessing. It's a gift from God. It's the purpose of God to be married. If you're a man, you need to marry a woman. If you're a woman, you need to marry a man. And if you don't know which one you are, I'll help you out after this. I was never good at maths, but I'll work it out. Marriage is a blessing. Amen. Amen. Keith at the back there said amen. And now his wife's going to hold on to me. Your gay's going to hold on even stronger. But their marriage, like every one of them, has been through the hard times. Because you know what marriage will sort you out? Like worship will get you to focus on God. Marriage will help you get your eyes off yourself and love someone other than yourself. Because what Karen needs is not for me to love her the way I like loving her. It's the way she needs to be loved by me, whether it's comfortable for me or not. That's love. Love covers a multitude. Love does for another one what they need to be done before they need to ask you. That's what love is. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. And wives are wonderful for husbands. Amen. When they're in the car with us, they help us. In case the spe speedometer doesn't work on my Kia, she tells me, do you know how fast you're going? And I said, I haven't thought about it recently, but you tell me. Because she's my little helper in the car. She tells me when we get to a traffic light that's not working because of load shedding. She tells me when it's my turn to go. Mm hmm Sometimes I'm so confused. All these cars. And she says, it's your turn to go. I thank you, darling. It's my turn to go. Wives are a blessing. When I'm reversing, she does, I don't have to look back because she's looking back. I know I've got a rear view mirror, but she doesn't always trust that mirror. She has a look for it. Watch out, the wall coming up, the, the, the gate coming up. And then on Saturdays when I'm about to relax, she's got a long list. Just in case I get bored before the game. <laughs> Which one tells me how much time I've got left there? The top right. The blue one. Heck, okay, let's move on. Listen, yet, then one thing. We want families that have families. Families are a blessing. Children are a blessing. They will enrich your life. And I know we obeyed, go forth and multiply, but God hasn't withdrawn that commandment. Amen. And if there's anyone here that can't have children, I, I, I prophesy and I speak healing that you will be able to have children your own children, I pray for a miracle for you. So we, we need to be witnesses. And um, the best pe person to witness to people in your world is you. Because you're praying for them and you're looking for an opportunity to share. What if you get to work tomorrow and one of them pulls you aside and says, I've had an awful weekend or I got so fraught, I need to repent. Share the gospel. Will you be able to share the gospel? There are people in your world, God's going to uh, give you the opportunity and privilege to share the gospel. So take out your pen and paper right now, and you're going to watch a, th a three-minute clip on how to One way you can share the gospel is called the three circles. There's another one called the bridge illustration. You can get it on YouTube. You can get an app as well. So if you want to do it on an app, but this is one way you can share. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take three minutes. I want you to take notes on the one side of your paper on how to share 
the gospel. We're going we're gonna to do a test afterwards. If you fail the test, there's a Lutheran church just down the road here. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, man, I'm bad. Even when Karen's in the service, you know, it's things, it's, it's called revival. Um, so, um, sorry, Holy Spirit. So, um, we get three minutes, and then after this, you're going to share with the person next to you for another three minutes. So, you need to take note now, because that person's salvation might be dimming on you right now. Don't let the team down. I've, I've still got a great walk with the Lord, so don't let me down now, I'm joking. Okay, watch this for three minutes. If you turn on the television or look at your Facebook feed, it's very clear that we live in a broken world. There's a lot of death, a lot of disease and suffering. But we also see traces of beauty, like the beauty of a sunset or the laugh of a child. And that's because God's design was perfect when He made it. There was no death or disease or suffering. But starting with the very first people, we as humans chose to go our own way and leave God's perfect design. And that's called sin. And, and sin is what led to brokenness in our world and us and sinfulness. Well, we don't like to be in brokenness, this state that we're born in. So we try to get out. So for some, they try to get out on their own by climbing the ladder of success at work or school, thinking that'll get them out. Others try to get out themselves by doing good things or being religious and going to church and helping people. And while those are great things, they, they don't get us out of brokenness. Some try to drown out the brokenness with drugs and alcohol or attempts at suicide or, or maybe even relationships. And these attempts to get out of brokenness ourselves end up snapping us back in like a bungee cord. But God loved us so much, He didn't want us to stay in brokenness. So He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He provided the only way out. And that is through His Son, Jesus. You see, Jesus came down into our world and allowed Himself to be killed on a cross, taking on our sin. And three days later, he rose from the dead, and he declared that if anyone would turn from their way and surrender to him and believe that Jesus came and died on the cross and rose from the dead, and would be willing to make him their king or their Lord, that they would be forgiven and made new and would then be able to experience God's perfect design for their life. And I want to ask you, which of these two would you say you're in? Are you still in brokenness? Or have you repented and believed in Jesus and are now back in His design? Okay, you're in brokenness. Well, which one of these two do you want to be in? Okay, great. Well, is there anything that keeps you from turning from your way and believing in the gospel of Jesus and making Him your Lord, your King? Okay, great. You know, when I chose to make this decision, I prayed a simple prayer, very similar to this picture. I just told God that I'm sorry for my sin, that I left your design, and for the ways that I've tried to get out of brokenness on my own. I'm ready to turn from my way and surrender to you, and I believe that this is true, and I want to make you my Lord so I can become new and experience your design for my life. Is that something you'd like to do? And then just pray with them. So this is the Three Circles Gospel presentation. Great. Okay, you turn, find someone if you need to move seats or whatever um, to share the presentation with someone. Um, if there's two of you you both want to share, just do um, rock, paper, scissors. First one that wins, wins. And then you share. So you can move along. Maybe you have to introduce yourself to someone. Go share the gospel presentation with someone. Three minutes. Let's go.
Okay, 10 seconds. So what you could do is maybe a few times this week, just practice it. Maybe imagine you're sitting with a colleague at work or a neighbor, and uh, they may have some questions. I know what you're thinking now. You're saying, well, you know, what if they ask, where did Cain get his wife? Listen, we are witnesses. We are witnesses. We're not defense attorneys. We don't have to defend Jesus or defend the word. There are people who do it. Take a screenshot of these guys on YouTube. They're phenomenal uh, intellectuals. Cliff Schneck. <laughs> um, Dr. Frank Turek and Professor John Lennox. They're brilliant. They have debates with atheists and Muslims and different religions. They're brilliant. They've got great answers. I think you, your friends have some real legitimate questions. You can take them to these people. They've got real questions. But listen, you can win an argument, but you'll never win a soul by arguing. Salvation is a work of the Spirit. And I want to encourage you to start the journey with someone. On your piece of paper right now, put down three dots. And next to those three dots, write down three people's names in your world that don't know Jesus. That if they were to die today, they would go to hell. That should, that should disturb you. Write down three names and start praying for them. Start praying that they'll intersect with um, great Christians. Start praying for ways to bless them, to, to reach out in kindness to them, to be a witness to them. Even pray for an opportunity to share the gospel with them. Pray for an opportunity to invite them to church or to life group. But you've got to leave your comfort zone. We only grow on the other side of our comfort zone. And if Jesus could leave heaven and take upon himself all our sin and pay for your sin and my sin with his sinless blood. Listen, not any blood covered your sin. The blood of Jesus covered your sin. If you and I walk in condemnation, guilt, and shame, we dishonor the blood of Jesus. We're saying the blood of Jesus is not strong enough for our sin. That's not right. But by the same token, if he forgave me, he can forgive others. Amen? So write down three names and believe them to come into the kingdom in the near future. Father, we pray for every name written down here that you will touch these lives and bring about miracle after miracle. Open door after open door. If you're in this place right now and you've never said yes to Jesus, today's the day you would like to become a follower of Jesus. Just raise your hand right now. If you're online, hit the raise hand button. Is there anyone here that wants to make today the day that they say yes to Jesus? Repent of your sin, put your faith in him. Just raise your hand right now. Is there anyone in this place? Just raise your hand right now. No one. Unbelievable. Someone. There's someone. Fantastic. <laughs> Sir, God bless you. We're handing you something there. Wonderful. That should help you in your journey with Jesus. Listen, this, sir, this is, the, this is the prayer we pray. Maybe we can all pray with you. Right there where you're seated right now. Will you pray this prayer with us? And will you mean it from your own heart? And if someone didn't raise their hand, pray this prayer right now and ask Jesus to become part of your life. Come on, let's all pray this prayer for that gentleman at the back as he makes a life-defining, eternity-altering decision. Let's pray this prayer. Jesus, I ask you to be Lord and Savior of my life. I believe you lived, died, and rose again. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and as me. I repent of all my sins. This is so important. I receive your forgiveness. I reject any of Satan's lies. Thank you, Jesus, for making me new. I choose to submit to you as Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me and lead me in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give that.